Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another system design video. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you an introduction to protocol buffers with an example in Go. So what are protocol buffers? Protocol buffers are a data format used to serialize structured data. It can be used for programs to communicate with each other over a network or for storing data. It uses an interface description language to describe the structure of some data and includes a collection of programs to generate source code from that description. So what are some of the programming languages supported by protocol buffers? Officially, uh, we can mention Java, C++, Go, C Sharp, Ruby, and I know in the community uh, there are languages like Rust and PHP supported as well. I'm pretty sure I'm missing a lot of the other supported languages, so I'm going to be leaving a link in the description to the official list of supported languages for protocol buffers. What are some of the alternatives to protocol buffers? Well, the popular ones will be XML and JSON, and there are other ones that are also binary like Avro and Thrift. We are using protocol buffers specifically in this case because it's the best way, quote unquote, uh, to use it with gRPC, which is the main goal of this video series. You don't have to use protocol buffers for with gRPC rather, uh, but it's sort of like rec the recommended way to do it. With all of that being said, let's look at the code and I will show you an example with Go and protocol buffers. As usual, the link to the code will be in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. What we are going to be doing first is look at the README. I included all the requirements for this example. There are two things that we need for sure. Well, one of them is recommended, but the one that we require for sure is Go 1.17. I know, I know that it, this works up to a few, I believe 1.15, but my recommendation will be to use the most recent Go version. I recommend installing DIRENV, which I mentioned previously, there's a video about it as well, and I will be also leaving the link to the post that covers why we should be using DIRENV and how to install it and those things. Now, there are four things that we need uh, that I like to use specifically when working with protocol buffers. Obviously, we need a Proto C compiler, we need the plugin for generating code in Go. We need the, uh, some sort of a, of a way to lint our protocol buffers. And we need also a way to also format our protocol buffers, sort of like GoFump in Go. So let's, in, let's, let's do that. Let's install a few of those things. I already have those installed, so I'm going to only install the Go uh, packages that we need. In this case, will be buff, and buff is a fantastic way to deal with protocol buffers. I highly encourage you to read the documentation. What I'm going to be showing you is the basic uh, that you need to know for using buff. You can use proto C directly, but trust me, it's, it's a little bit painful if you don't use a tool like buff. So we have installed protocol, we need to install the product gen for Go and we already installed buff. So we have the two binaries right here. What we have to do next will be to initialize uh, um, workspace in uh, using buff and we're going to be doing that by running the command buff config init. And what config init does is it creates a buff.jaml. For this example, we're going to be leaving it the way it is. Don't worry about it. Uh, we are going to be revising it, revising it in future episodes when I want to be covering uh, breaking changes and a few other ways to somehow uh, exclude LinkedIn rules that are applicable and are included in buff. Next, what we have to do is create another file called buff gen jaml. And the content of this file will be used for generating the code that we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be using the protocol buffers as reference and generating some code. In this case, will be in Go and in Ruby for an example. So the way it works is that obviously we already installed the plugin for generating code in Go. The protocol buffer includes uh, officially the code for generating uh, Ruby code, so we don't have to install anything else outside of the protocol buffer compiler. All right, with that being said, uh, feel free to check out the documentation that I have here in the code as well. So with that, the way buff recommends setting up your project is to create a folder that indicates the service name and a version, and obviously the protocol buffer files. In this example, we're going to be building a hypothetical users management uh, protocol buffer uh, the file, okay? So we're going to be creating a file called buffer, <laughs> not buffer, user v1. 
okay and inside this user v1 we're going to be creating a file called user now let me open the file here in my uh, in theme we're going to be calling user dot prolo the syntax there are two syntaxes in protocol buffers the one i recommend using will be syntax version three you can still use in use is syntax version number two but i highly encourage you to just start using uh, v3 in in this case so we have syntax and then proto three and then colon and then we need to define a message and a message is similar to what will be a struct in go if you're familiar so message let's call it user and what we care about at the moment will be defining uh, an id which in this case will be uh, uuid and um, um let's say a uh, full name now the important thing about protocol buffers is that you need to define the type the field name and also a tag name and this tag name is going to be important when we're dealing with versioning what it basically indicates is the location of the field in the whole message so so sort of a way to indicate where this field is located at so the cool thing about this is that uh, because we're using buff we can actually integrate and add some linting let me see i want to make a mistake right here to show you the example in this case i'm saying hey um the uuid and the full name are using the same value which in this case will be one this is incorrect all of the fields should have independent values if you notice if when i'm using buff lint you will see that the user proto dot uh, user profile is failing because with the fields uuid and full name have the same tag so this is a cool way if you add it to your ci cd pipeline to your uh, to your way to lint your files you can immediately detect errors like like this now let's run it again you will notice that there is a recommendation right here coming from buff that says hey please define a package in your protocol buffer files in order to define a package the convention that we should be following will be use the name that we use for the folder for the folders that include this file if you remember in this case will be user and v1 so we are going to be using user v1 and that will be the package if we run this again you will see that everything is passing again and there are no errors and that's what we're trying to do one interesting thing in protocol buffers is that it looks a little bit well like i said before uh, a lot like go so there are types for strings ins floats double and those kind of things there are also support for enums and nested uh, and other types like type of and any of which i will be covering in the future videos in this case just to keep it simple we're going to be defining uuid full name let me rename this thing and let's define an in64 called a uh, birth year which will be three so with this we already define what we need to define for this user protocol buffer protocol buffers also allow to define options in this case because we're going to be using go specifically i want to indicate hey what is the package name that we are going to be using and we're going to be finding an alias to it so we can use it in a future example that we're going to be covering also in this video for doing that i have this uh, option called go package and this path uh, is coming from the go mod that i define right here so if i look at my go mod my module name is all this path so i have it here which will be exactly what i define as a prefix and then if you notice there is a gen and then a go user and a v1 the important thing to remember is that these values are coming from the configuration in the buff yaml or rather in the buff gen yaml file so the out would be gen.go and because the folder of this protocol buffer is user slash v1 it will be also creating those folders as well so if i run buff generate what we're going to be doing uh, is going to be generating the file obviously but if you notice there's a new folder called gen and there is a new uh, folder inside called go user and then v1 and finally the user .pp.go which is the protocol buffer generated file that represents this specific proto uh, in this case so if we open that file you will notice that uh, uh, there is uh, some errors in my editor and that's because we need to call go mod tidy and what go mod tidy is going to be doing is going to be downloading the requirements that are for these two 
is going to be up there in my go mod which now it's including the reference to go protocol the google colang dot org protocol of the package that we need the other thing that uh, if you saw is there is another ruby folder that if you remember we also are generating a file uh, for ruby so if you look at the user v1 is it follows the same structure and if you see there is a ruby file for this one as well so i'll show you how to use the tools that we installed before except for one and this is clang format i like this one because it allows you to format the protocol buffer code to match something like what GoFump is doing in Go. If you notice, uh, let me make, uh, you know, just mess it up a little bit. If I run CLang format dash I and then I specify the path to the file, what is going to be happening is according to the configuration that I have right here, there's another file called CLang format. According to this configuration, it's going to be more or less format the file to look like what the struct types look in Go. So let's see, I have it right there. If I run the file, the command uh, is going to be updating it. And if you notice, now everything is sort of like aligned to the, uh, the spaces in between the uh, the types and the field names and everything is sort of like aligned like like what you look uh, what the structs in go look like right so this is some one of the cool things that i like now let's jump into the final example using a uh, ruby and go and a binary file and making them communicate with each other via this file in this final example i'm showing you the actual value of using protocol buffers which is between two different languages using the same data for communicating between the two of them in this case i'm going to be using ruby and i'm going to be using go and the example is trivial but it's really amazing if you think about it so for the write i have two, two programs one writer and one reader the writer is write, written in go and if you notice i'm importing the package that was generated in just a few minutes ago and it's just literally just writing a file let me scroll down a little bit so oops not that down so you can see the whole code so i have a user which is the protocol buffer the actual generated message and it's marshalling it into an, an, a slice of bytes and then it's writing it in some file called user bin okay so if i run the writer main and it will generate a file called user bin which is right there so if i open it if i display it you will notice that it's a bunch of binaries a binary a bunch of binary data so if i run the writer i'm sorry if i open the reader which is a written in ruby you will see that it's actually implementing importing or requiring the generated file the for ruby in this case which is the user pb file and similarly to it's not doing them on marshalling it's called it's called decode in ruby and it's reading the file and then it's printing out the value so if i run ruby a uh, reader main.go you will notice that it's actually the value that i have right here okay let's say if i want to modify so you see i'm not cheating if i go and put mario i change it to wario and then i put the 2900 if i run again go run a writer main and if i do a ruby reader main you will notice that now it says wario and 2900 really cool right so this was a really quick introduction to protocol buffers, buff, protogen C, uh, dear env, and all the tools that I showed you. I'm going to be covering much more deeply all of this in near future episodes. So feel free to leave a comment if you want to know something more about versioning or detecting uh, changes or uh, breaking changes between different versions of protocol buffers. Or if you want to know more about gRPC, just let me know in the comments section below i'll talk to you next time take care and stay safe see you